Amen. Somebody say amen. Everybody is standing. We are ready. All right, 2 Timothy 4 and 7 says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Once again, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Uh, you may be seated if you can. So let's begin here. Um, faith, when we started this Moving Forward series, um, mine is titled Moving Forward in Faith. Moving Forward in Faith. Now, when we started the series, we started, uh, Pastor Johnson preached a little bit about Joseph, and then he went on, but that Joseph thing got, caught me. I, I, I mean, I'm going to tell the truth. Look, that was my sermon, so I'm like, really? I got to go home and write again? I'm telling the truth. It's right here in this book. You can read my notes. So um, I, I wrote a sermon. So I've been writing for four weeks, y'all. And then so um, I guess he said that was for you. So I wrote that one for me, and I wrote the next one for me. So I at least wrote about three, four sermons, okay? So <laughs> And it's hard going last, but I'm excited. I'm excited because the Lord is getting ready to do something here in this place today. He has something to say. I am excited. Um, man, Pastor Johnson, uh, I'm going to leave yours alone, okay? I ain't going to go there. So um, it talks about I have fought a good fight. I have fought a good fight. When I think of a good fight, I think of back in the day when fighting was almost fair. And it was almost fair because you had time to prepare. I don't know if you remember or not. Maybe my age, somewhere around there, if you're my age, you know. And I ain't going to tell you what that is, but a little bit over from 40. Yeah. So you remember a good fight. I don't know if you remember a good fight. Who remembers a good fight? I remember a good fight. And a good fight involved a little bit of preparation. Amen. So in the old days, what I call the old days, my old days, um, I fought or, or I, know, I saw a couple of good fights. And uh, every time, it kind of looked the same. First of all, uh, they said, let me remove my earrings. <laughs> remove my earrings. Okay, and then they said, let me go get some Vaseline. I need some grease on my face. And then they said, the last thing, I need to put on my tennis shoes because you needed to be prepared. And I was like, I was thinking, like, what about, the, what is this thing about the good fight? And so the Holy Spirit was telling me, you are in a fight. But some of you haven't prepared. You're in a fight, but some of you haven't prepared. He said, the earrings are a snare. You know what the enemy puts? A snare in your way. A snare can be sin. A snare can be a lie. A snare can be a person that ain't supposed to be there. I'm borrowing from uh, Pastor Johnson, uh, them randoms. It's a snare, something that could get in your way that the enemy can pull and cause damage. Okay? Because that was what the removal of the earrings was for. Okay? And then you had the Vaseline. But why, why do I need this? It says so that the hits. And the scratches, the hits was going to slip, but the scratches would not come on me. So you ain't going to be able to catch your nail on me. So if you did get a hit, it's going to slide off. If you did get one. If you did. And then the shoes. It's like you need the right shoes. And then I thought about the scripture that says, my feet need to be prepared with the gospel. So I said, I need to remove the snares, I need to apply the anointing, and I need the gospel. So if I'm going to fight, I need to fight right. Somebody say fight right. Fight right. Some of us have been fighting wrong. Some of us have been fighting wrong. Some of us have been fighting wrong. Let me tell you why. Because you thought the fight was always fair. You thought the fight was always fair. You knew you was in the fight. You knew you were going to fight. You knew where the fight was going to be, but you didn't know what was waiting for you on the other side. Let me see. Hold up. Hold up. Somebody's in the bushes. The 
Bible says, sometimes when the enemy leaves or he is cast out, he gets eight more that are more wicked than him. And he comes around and he waits and he said, and I will enter back in. So some of us have been fighting wrong. So you team one. You all by myself. You, you, you by yourself. And you don't know the beauty of community. You don't know the beauty of community. Because sometimes you got to get with some brothers and sisters who got the same aim as you do so that you can walk together. So they see you coming down the street with all of your squad. They going to pop out them bushes and start taking numbers and measuring you up. Do I want to mess with her today? Do I want to mess with her today? No, I don't. No, I don't. And that's how you got to do the enemy. And see, some of us, we don't like community. We ain't ready to join with our brothers and sisters because it's team one because we got hurt. Oops. We got hurt because that sometimes happens in a fight. That happens in a fight. You get hurt. Sometimes you fall. But guess who's there to pick you up? Not team one. Not by myself. Not me, myself, and I. But with community. The community is going to keep you. Sometimes we got to pull the unity out of community. You got to get that unity. And you got to put, but the only way you're getting unity is if you have community. So we've been fighting wrong. So what I'm trying to say is, let's get prepared. Let's get prepared. Sometimes we're going to have to come to this altar and we are going to have to lay down our snares. Somebody preaching with me? We're going to have to lay down those snares. Everybody say, lay down those snares. And sometimes we are going to come, we're going to have to come to this altar and we're going to say, Lord, I need your power. I need your anointing. And that's where that Vaseline comes from. Because we need the power and the anointing of God. Sometimes we get into fights we wasn't anointed to get into. That wasn't your fight. But you big, you bad, and you didn't have nobody with you. And you walked up in that thing. But it's okay. Sometimes it comes out in your favor. Sometimes it don't. But God has your back. God has your back. So we need to fight right. We need unity in our community. We need unity in our community, and we need to be prepared, and we need to learn how to measure. We need to learn how to measure, because the enemy is measuring us. But see here, here's the thing. Measuring is required. Measuring, in order to be measured, you must have community. She coming for me. That was a statement. Like, they're coming for me. Don't come for me. No, come for me. No, come, come on. And not in that bad way. I need God to actually measure. I need, I need to be measured. Because if you don't know yourself, you surely can't know your opponent. You can't know your opponent. Because if you can't measure yourself, you can't measure your opponent. So that's why I have a sister here. And she's going to measure me. She measures me. She sees something that's, that doesn't quite line up with the word of God in me. She's going to say something. But we, it's that don't come for me spirit. But the enemy's coming for you. But you have a don't come for me. But he's coming for you. And so when we meet the enemy, we become, we're not ready. We're not ready. So it's time for the church to get ready. We need to know how and te be taught how to be measured. We're too afraid to allow people in our lives to allow them to say, hey, this is an area that ain't too good. We don't want to be measured because that hurts. Measuring doesn't always feel good because it requires to pull the blankets back and it's cold. You're exposed. Pull the blankets back. It's time to get up. So when we see these things in our brothers and sisters, you know, we have to understand 
that if I'm praying for you, if I'm standing with you, if I'm unified with you, then let me measure you and you measure me. So that when we, so when we get ready to enter into our fights, we're ready. We're ready. We did some measuring just this morning. God is measuring us. There's some big fights coming up. There's some big things headed our way. But are we prepared? Are we entering in to fights that ain't ours? Are we entering into fights unprepared? Are we entering into fights without unity? Are we entering into fights? We need our word. We need on the right shoes. You're trying to do this thing in some red bottoms. That ain't it. Oh, that ain't it. Let's see what the word says. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 and 4 says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. How many of us still have strongholds in our lives? Perhaps we are not fighting right. Perhaps we are not prepared. So let's get ready to fight right. Hallelujah. So in order for us to fight correctly, our weapons, we don't fight like man did. We don't fight like men. See, we feel like sometimes we have to have that same mentality that we had on the street. And God is trying to tell us, I need you to trade in your arsenal because it's outdated. It's outdated. So all that scratching on the street, I, I'm, I'm saying he wants us to trade it in. He wants us to trade it in because uh, God is trying to teach us how to speak the word. And if you speak the word concerning a certain thing, it has to change. It cannot stay the same. So we got to come uh, correct. We got to come correct. So as we understand uh, what the war we're in and we understand that sometimes we think the war is over before it's actually over though. No, you just finished the battle, but the war is not over. Because right after you win that war, and don't shout too long, right after you win that war, or that battle, excuse me, there's another battle coming behind it. Because the enemy is angry. He's angry. And the Bible says it. He's coming back with eight more. Eight more. So that's nine in total. More wicked than that. So not only... Do we have to begin to cast things out? Not only do we have to start learn to fight right, we have to learn how to build an armory around ourselves with the word of God. Because sometimes we are unprotected. So sometimes we're unprotected because we refuse to do community. We refuse to do community. So our weapons, our weapons together, our word, our mindset, unity in our community, and we are preparing then to fight right. So the first point I was going to give is the, the faith. Your faith will always lead you to the fight. Your faith will always lead you to the fight. And so uh, while that don't sound too good, because faith sounds like, you know, kind of soft word, faith. Say it right. Faith. You know, faith. It sounds soft. But see, Daniel, <laughs> Daniel had faith. Joshua had faith. All of those people, both of those people had faith. Gideon had faith. But in order to accomplish, to get to the promise, all of them had to go through the fight. So the faith is going to always lead you to the fight. The faith is always going to lead you to the fight. So if you want the promise, sometimes, and in most cases, you're going to have to fight. You're going to have to fight. Did you read the Bible? 
I know you did. And that's why you often see. And I, I was looking at the heroes of faith in Hebrews. And it kept saying how they won this battle. And how they won that battle. And how they won this war. And how they won that war. And how they had to get the spoils. But that was after the battle. And I'm like, it's just battle after battle after battle. And God was trying to tell me, in order to increase your faith, you are going to have to learn, and you are going to have to continue, and you are going to have to persevere through the fight. So who understands that? Say amen. 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 So uh, Ephesians 6 and 12 says, Ephesians 6 and 12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That sounds like a pretty big job. That sounds like it's a lot against us that we have to wrestle with. But we don't wrestle in flesh and blood. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We don't operate or, 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 or carry out things after our flesh because we will lose that way. Not only will you lose, but you'll lose your mind. So in order to keep your mind in the, in the heat of the battle, you are going to have to learn how to fight and how to wrestle in the spirit. And you are going to have to learn sometimes that you're going to have to get low. Because sometimes the bullets are flying high and God is saying, it's time to get low. It's time to pray. It's time to pray. But a lot of us, sometimes we feel a little timid about prayer because we have some snares. And, and, and we have, you know, we've like, oh, I forgot my Vaseline. No, don't forget it. It's inside of you. It's inside of you. God has anointed you for this. God has anointed you for this fight because trust me, the enemy is measuring you. God is waiting for you to let, let him measure you so that you can understand that he's for you. I am, I, he's not going to send you into a battle that you're not fit for. Now, you can try to run into one, but he's not going to send you out there helpless, and he's not going to send you out there hopeless. He is a God that will prepare you. So he has an anointing for your life. He has a, a word for you. He has a prophetic word ready for you to motivate you to finish your fight. You see, but this fight isn't fair all the time because God is with us. God is with us, and if he's with you, he's more than a world against you. So the fight really isn't fair. So uh, the enemy can bring his eight more if he wants to, because we're going to be here. We're going to be measured. We're going to be right. We're going to be snareless. We're going to have our word ready, and we're going to fight the enemy on his front. And when he sees that our house is decor with the word of the Lord, when he comes and he checks and he's snooping and he's looking and he's waiting to see if the same door that was open the last time is still open this time, he already knows. I think she closed the door. Somebody's been watching the door. Somebody done closed the door. Let me turn the knob. Wait, it's locked. Hold up. See, the enemy's going to come. It's a, it's a matter of time, not a matter of if. And when he comes, you need to be ready. You need to be prayed up. You need to get with some community so you can have some unity. Because my prayers and your 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 prayers, and, your prayers, and we already know we're going to reach heaven. We're going to reach heaven, and we're going to keep praying until change happens. We're going to keep praying until change takes place. Because when we come together, we're no longer timid. We're not afraid. There's power in numbers. There's power in numbers. One can chase a thousand. But I like what the second part says. It says two can put 10,000 to flight. So what is that saying? Don't look over that first part. It says, I can chase a thousand. But in the second part, there's no more chasing. I don't have to chase anything. So the fact they said, it'll put 10,000 to flight. Two can put 10,000 to flight, which means I no longer have to chase. I don't have to move. I can stand boldly. I can stand boldly and understand and know that they are in flight. I no longer have to be. I no longer have to be. I no longer have to be. 
So you may be asking, Elder, when should I pray? Good question. When should you pray? During the subtle changes. During the subtle changes. The enemy is not bringing a bomb all the time. Sometimes he's bringing a chisel. And he wants to just crack at the small pieces of us. Because sometimes we see them changes, but we don't want to say nothing. I don't want to make nobody uncomfortable. Your slip hanging, I don't want to say nothing. I don't want to be uncomfortable. I don't want to be uncomfortable in my own home. Do I really have the authority to be saying all of this? Should I be saying it? And the fact that you're having all them conversations in your head is a big old absolute yes. 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 It's the small changes. Because we don't want to be measured. First, it was a holding the hands. Then it was, you know, kiss my hand. Cute. Cute. Okay. Then it was a rub on the shoulder. Like, okay. Marsage. Okay. All right. Amen. Ain't nothing wrong. Ain't nothing wrong with a little massage. Shoulder. Then it's that whole arm. Ooh, okay. Feel nestled. Amen. And next you got a family. See? <laughs> Skip to the end. <laughs> Skip to the end. <laughs> but I know you feel me. It's the subtle things. It's the subtle things. Because we get intimate with sin, don't we? Real comfortable. Real comfortable, real quick, because we live in a flesh. We don't want to check this flesh. I don't want to check it. I want my ice cream. And 30 pounds later, he's like, hmm, yeah. Now you paying for membership. It's going to cost you. So you might as well cost you in prayer. You might as well be measured because it's going to cost you anyway. So I'd rather you hurt my feelings, God, than for me to lose the fight. I've lost battles simply because I didn't listen. I ain't going to stay on the fight too long because we can go all night. But look here. Next point. Oh, my goodness. We almost out of here. Faith will lead to freedom. Faith will lead you to freedom. Your faith will lead you to freedom if you fight. <laughs> if you fight, your faith will lead to freedom. Romans 6 and 15 through 18 says, so since we're out, and this is the Message Bible. So since we're out from under the old tyranny, does that mean we can live any old way that we want? Since we're free in the freedom of God, can we do anything that comes to mind? Verse 16 says, hardly. You know well enough from your own experience that there are some acts of so-called freedom that destroy Freedom. Offer yourselves to sin, for instance, and it's your last free act. But offer yourselves to the ways of God, and the freedom never quits. All your lives you let sin tell you what to do. Verse 17, but thank God you started listening to a new master. 18, one who commands one whose commands set you free to live openly in his freedom. I can live free in his freedom. So what's living free 
but not in his freedom. Because I started to question that a little bit. You mean I can be free but not living in his freedom? So that's like me walking around. I'm free, but I still got chains on. I'm not bound. I'm not bound, but I still got chains on. So are you really free? So are you really free? God is trying to help us remove the chains. And sometimes when we walk into situations and we don't measure, and we're not measured, and we're found wanting, we get those chains hooked back up on us again. Yeah, you free, but you got that ankle bracelet on. You free, but you on house arrest. You free, but your financial blessings come in $5 increments. You free, but your finances are limited for a reason. You free, but are you walking in the freedom of God? There's a difference. God wants you to be free to walk in his freedom. Yes. The, the biggest thing is, and I kept hearing this in the spirit yesterday, I don't want to be bored. Somebody need to get free from the spirit of, I don't want to, that's actually a fear. I don't really want to walk in this thing because I don't want to be bored. I don't want my creativity snubbed by uniformity. I don't do this church thing too well. I don't do it. And, we, and we've seen it before. We've seen it before. We've seen that spirit. Because we'll say, you know, you've seen that couple, that cool couple. I like the husband, but... Mm, know about his wife. I don't know. But isn't that how we do the church? We want Jesus, but we don't want his people. He said, but these people are my bride. The church is my bride. And I died for her. This imperfect people. Yeah, the one that rubbed you the wrong way. I died for her. That guy that got on your nerve. I died for him. He is my church. They are my church. Those are my people. And that's how we get in the church sometimes. We get creative in our emotions and our feelings because we think it's about us. We think it's about us, but it's really about him and what he did. So let's start liking his wife again like her because she is us she is us we are the bride imperfect late a little bit we late still putting beads on the dresses the day of but we gonna get ready he is patient with his bride but why are we not patient with our brothers and our sisters can I tell you why? Because we don't pray. Prayer will remove the veil and put the mirror back up. We're delusioned sometimes and thinking that it doesn't apply to us. This lesson doesn't apply to us. I take your silence and your head shakes as I get it her. So I'm going to walk back up here. I get what she's saying. We almost out of here. Okay, this is the last one. Look, um, look, I almost slept on this scripture. It made me mad. I got it on the way here. Oh, yes. I'm going to share it with you. I hope y'all get it. I'm going to try to explain it like he explained it to me. Okay, faith will help you finish. Faith will help you finish. Because y'all know we don't finish nothing, right? Right? We have half done outfits. We've been trying to sew clothes. We got half done papers probably sitting waiting on us. Oh, right? Huh? I'm not only me. Okay. Only me. Y'all got some half done stuff? We got some, pro we got closets full of projects of half 
done stuff. Thank God for a patient bridegroom. Thank God for Jesus. He is waiting patiently until his return. <laughs> and everybody, if you ain't in the door, <laughs> amen. So uh, faith will help you finish. Uh, 2 Corinthians 8, 9 through 11. 2 Corinthians 8, 9 through 11 in our Message Bible. Message Bible. Uh, it reads, you are familiar with the generosity of our master, Jesus Christ. Rich as he was, he gave it all away for us. In one stroke, he became poor and we became rich. So here's what I think. The best thing you can do right now is to finish what you started last year and not let those good intentions grow stale. Your heart been in the right place all along. You've got what it takes to finish up. So go do it. Last week we talked about the people circling the mountain over and over and over again. Over and over and over again. Does that seem like us? We had to have some conversations right afterwards. I'm telling you. Look here. I feel better having a conversation after a good sermon. Because I know that God is working within me. Sometimes we are afraid to contend, to disagree, to put our opinions on the table. We are scared because that somehow means that um, we're not together. No, that means that I'm putting what I have to say out there and let the Lord and the Holy Spirit, you're putting what you have to say out there and the Holy Spirit is making corrections because then we crack that word open, right? And we say, oh, okay, all opinions over. This is what the word says. Right? Because if we don't get that out, we keep it in. And if we keep it in, mm, mm, we can't keep it in. It's not, it doesn't belong there. So God wants us to finish. He wants us to learn how to finish. Learn how to finish. And so this is the part that I almost slept on. It says, in one stroke, he became poor, and we became rich. And I was like, so how do you finish? What does that have to do with finishing? He said, because in order to finish, you're going to have to die. You are going to have to die. How? He said, die to yourself. You can't finish because it's too much of you. And none of me. You can't finish. You have to finish. If you want to finish, you got to do what I did. I said, well, Jesus, what are you talking about? Holy Spirit, what are you trying to say? He says, look at the life of Jesus. Nobody knew how to move forward in faith better than Jesus. Brothers, all 12 of his brothers cutting up, moving forward. I'm still washing feet. I'm still going to make the meal. I'm still going to serve my brother. The one I put my hand in the bowl with, that's the one who's going to betray me. I said it loud and clear. Even the other ones around me don't even hear what I'm saying. They don't recognize because they're talking about who's greatest among them. So you can't see that the enemy is sitting right here at the table. But I was hoping you didn't hear anyway because I don't want you to beat Judas up because he got to go do his job, okay? So moving forward in faith, I'm still going to wash everybody's feet. I'm still going to get this meal together. I'm still going to clean this table. And some of us have a problem with passing the tray to our enemy. And God is saying, I ate bread with mine. You don't know how to finish. I will teach you how to finish, but you're going to have to move out of your flesh. It's too much of you and none of me. Jesus said, you want to finish? Look at me. Pay attention to me. 
follow me and I will show you how to finish. You can't move forward if you don't have any faith. Faith in what? Me. So after that, I went outside and I went to the garden and I went to go pray. And I said, hey, can y'all pray with me? I took my closest three and I said, hey, can y'all stay up? Can you, uh, can you pray with me? Can you stay up for about two more hours? I got two more hours. The Son of Man is getting ready to be betrayed. But nobody still heard me, but I'm going to finish. Nobody heard me at the table, but I'm still going to finish. But can y'all pray with me? So he went outside, and he's in the garden, and he's praying. And he looked over and said, oh, my God, are y'all asleep? Y'all couldn't pray with me for two hours, but I still love you, and I'm going to still die for you. But, man, can't y'all stay up for a couple of hours? And Jesus is saying, hey, I'm still moving forward in faith, so I'm still going to go. And I said, I'm going to get on my knees, and I'm going to pray to the Father. Yes, I'm contemplating stopping all of this uh, uh, crucifixion stuff. Cross sound a little tough. Mm. Cross sounds a little tough. I don't know if I want to be nailed to this thing. Can this cup be passed for me? This is a little bitter. I don't think I want to do it. I am the most high. And I, I, I am uh, Jesus Christ. I am your beloved son. Am I not? Am I not? See, we get in position. We think titles means we're entitled. We are not entitled to anything but the same death he died to. That's the only thing you're entitled to. We feel like God owes us something because we're titled. No, sit down, get on your knees and pray just like he did. If you want to move forward in faith, you got to pray. So what came next? So his enemies mounted on him. Even though they said, he said, I've been preaching for weeks and weeks and weeks. Y'all didn't even touch me. Y'all slow. Y'all could have caught me. But y'all going to wait till I'm praying? Y'all going to wait till I'm here? Y'all going to wait So he's like, Ugh, moving forward. See, that's us. We don't want to be inconvenienced. We don't want to be inconvenienced. But in order to move forward in faith, we got to do what Jesus did. You got to die to self. So next thing he did, his enemies apprehended him, took him. He's been preparing his disciples in ministry and, 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 and in parables this entire time. He's been preparing them. He said, the son of man will be apprehended. <laughs> he said it, he said it, he said it. And still they didn't understand. I know they didn't understand because Peter got out his sword. Bop, bopping people on the ear, cutting the ears off. He said, I didn't tell you to do that. So he picks it up and he puts it back on and he heals the man. And you think his, at his apprehenders would be like, okay, he's healing ears. Okay, I'm going to back off. No. You didn't get the clue, but I'm still going to move forward in. Oh, somebody said they're ready to go. One person over here. So I'm still going to move forward in. All right. So after that, he said, okay, they got me. Okay, they're going to beat me. They're going to mock me. They're going to make fun of me. They're going to make fun of my ministry. They're going to laugh at me. They ain't going to like what I said. This is the same people that last week they were throwing uh, uh, pine, pine cones and pine, pine pieces and pine leaves at my feet, telling me king, calling me king. See, that's like us. We get caught up in the fanfare. We want a piece of this. We want this mic, but we don't want to do what it costs to be up here. We don't want to tell our real story. We don't want to talk about the real betrayal. We don't want to seek him what it really causes. We don't want to know what it really costs. We don't want that part. That part is ugly. Because we don't want to be embarrassed. We don't want the hurt. We don't want the pain. But he said if you want death, if you want faith, if you want to move forward, your faith is going to lead you to the fight. Your faith is going to lead you to your freedom. Your faith is going to have you to and allow you to finish. But in order to finish, you are going to have to learn how to die. So after they beat him, made fun of him, mocked him, they took his clothes and they gambled him off. Let somebody steal from us. Oh, my God, we have a fit. Did you take my stuff? I'm like that about my apple juice. Tripping. Ask Chaz. Take it. 
make it. I was waiting on it. But they tried to take his life. Take his life. But we ain't ready. We ain't ready. I was like, Lord, I don't know if I'm ready. But I got to move forward. He said, in faith. I want you to move forward in faith. So they stole his things. They gambled it off. Okay? So now you're going to make me carry my device that you want to kill me on. How many people would carry their casket? And we guilty. Guilty of sin. We're born in it. Shaped in it. He was innocent and carried his weapon that they tried to use against him. He said, don't worry. I'm going to turn my weapon into a cold finish. Into a cold finish. A finish. So they nailed him to it. We can't step on a nail. Like, God, I need an ambulance. My God. A finish. God is trying to teach us how to finish. Die to ourselves. Everything that he did mattered. Every move that he made mattered. Every word that he said mattered. Everything that he said. Everything that he says. So he hangs on the cross. And while he up there, somebody says, can you work? We don't want to be called on our day off. Let me tell you something. Do not call on a day off. I ain't home. I ain't answering. But there was a thief. He's like, hey, while you hanging here dying, can you <laughs> talk to me about some salvation? I'm like, what? And he says, yes. I'm going to have a full-blown conversation during the process of my death. But just let somebody rub us the wrong way. We ain't even answering our phone call. We ain't even responding to texts. We ain't talking to nobody. And God is trying to show us, I want you to finish in faith. I want you to finish. But you got to do what I did. And then after that, after that, he had to get it from the other side. The other thief. And the other thief is over here tripping. Tripping. And he wants him to commercialize. He, he said, oh, well, shh. No, you, if you're the one who said you are, why don't you go and jump off this thing? Jump off this piece. Have your legions of angels to save you. Hoping he could probably get a ride too. No, Jesus says, I'm going to live in my conviction. I'm going to live in my conviction. I had to live in the conviction, conviction that I was self-righteous. And poor in spirit. And God was trying to teach me through these pains, through these nails, through this process, that there's a finisher in me. There's a finisher in me. He was trying to teach me, you're a finished project. I'm going to shine you up. I'm going to get you ready. Because it's hard to shine a thing when you're covered in dirt. So he gave up the ghost. He gave it up. He said, it is finished. It is finished. But was he? But was he really finished? Because some of us think finished means stop. Some of us think finish means let's pause and take a break. Some of us think that means finish. No, he said, let me show you how to finish. Because I'm going to go ahead and while I'm in this grave, I'm going to take authority over death. And I'm going to take authority over hell. But 
Elder, I thought you said he said he was finished. No, finished means that he's going to complete the job. And then after that, he says, I'm going to get up. He told them earlier, he said, if you destroy this temple in three days, I'm going to raise it up. He was trying to tell everybody the whole time. But God is saying, I've been trying to tell you the whole time. My word says that if you seek me, I will what? Oh, somebody said, I will what? If you seek me, I will answer. Okay, so let's try this again. If you seek me, I will. Amen. So let's seek the Lord. Let's seek his ways. Let's look at his life. So he says, I'm going to take authority. How do you get authority? You are going to have to die to yourself. How do you get authority? You have to die to yourself. But some of us don't want authority because we've never had it. So God is trying to teach you and show you, I'm going to give you authority. He's trying to teach you. He's trying to teach you. So let's connect these messages. I'm going to give you authority over your mind. As Pastor Johnson preached about Joseph, I looked at Joseph in his rich era, and I looked at how he had everything. But he, he did not understand how to handle his emotions when he saw the enemy or what he thought was the enemy, which was his brothers, come up. And they began to bow to him because they needed food. And there was the manifestation of the promise right there. But he couldn't understand it and he couldn't handle it. He finally came full circle and he went in the back and he broke down. So God is telling us, hey, I don't want you to go in the back and break down. You came all this way. You went through all this mess. You don't have to pull from any area of your life where snares were there. You don't have to pull from your snares. Pull from my word. I have built you for this. I have built you for this. And so let's look at those undefined relationships. Jesus had a whole lot of them. He had about 12 of them sitting next to him at the table. But see, he defined those relationships. He said, these are my sons. And hey, they may have left me. They may have abandoned and ran in 12 different directions. But I'm going to use them. I'm going to bring them back to the table. And I'm going to make some apostles out of them. And I'm going to make them spread my story. I'm going to make them spread my word. And then, so we go to the next week, and sis said, yes. So sis who was dealing with the 12 years of blood, all those years, God is trying to tell you, you have to fight. You have to have faith if you want to get free. So your faith is going to lead you to your freedom. Your faith is going to lead you to the fight. So I guess sis said, I can't take the tall way. I got to go under the way the, uh, the, way the prophet team, uh, the prophet team, y'all better go ahead and prophesy. The way the prophetic team up here kept saying, I got to go under. So the lady who suffered for 12 years, she went under. She went low. She went in a position of worship. And so she said, I'm going to get free. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish this if I could just simply get to Jesus. If I can get to Jesus, if I can get to Jesus, oh, hallelujah. And then to finish it off, God said, I'm going to show you how to finish. You no longer have to carry around yourself around that mountain any longer. God says, I'm going to help you to finish. Even though the enemy is looking at you, even though he's measuring you, I'm going to show you how to finish. I'm going to show you how to finish. And not only are you going to finish, I'm going to prepare a table before your enemies. I'm going to show them that I called you to do a great work. I'm going to show you that I called you to do a great work. You shall not stop. You shall not stop. You shall not pause any longer. You are not going to get tired because I'm going to fill you with the Holy Spirit. I'm going to fill you because I've anointed you for such a time as this. Sometimes we get discouraged. Sometimes we feel like, God, are you still with me? I've sinned. I have snares. I have problems. I have issues. I need a tissue. And God is saying, I've delivered you. I bought you up. My redeeming blood is on you. All I see is red. All I see is red. All I see is my blood. All I see is my blood. And I'm going to teach you how to finish. I'm going to teach you 
that even though it seemed like all was lost, all was done, he said on that third day, on that third day, on that third day, but nobody was there. Nobody saw him get up except God himself. We want people to see us when we get up. Uh, Jesus said, I don't need a crowd. All I need is the Holy Ghost on the inside of me. I don't need any recognition. But let me tell you something. There was a woman. Her name was Mary. And she was used to the dark. If you know what I mean. And she went out there. And she looked. And she looked when nobody else would be there. And she discovered that the Savior had risen. And she said, where did they lay him? Where did they lay him? So she started talking to the gardener. But y'all know who that was. And he said, wait, wait. Tell them the good news. Tell them the good news. Tell them the good news. Tell them the good news that I have risen. That I have risen. That I have risen. That I have risen. risen. You've been down. But you're about to raise up. You've been down. But you're about to get up. You've been down. You've been down long enough. And God is saying, I gave you my spirit. And the same spirit that rose Christ from the dead will quicken your mortal bodies. How do I keep in this fight? You don't know how deep and how far back this thing goes. How do I stay in the fight? And God is saying, I gave you my spirit. I gave you my spirit. And if you got my spirit, I'm expecting a strong finish. Oh, I'm expecting a strong finish. I'm expecting a strong finish. So what does that look like, Elder? What does my finish look like? What does my finish look like? Well, I don't know what yours look like, but I know what mine look like. I had to go back to family and say that I'm sorry. I had to go back and pray for people that I thought was under my league or outside of my sphere. God is saying, you ain't got no sphere. You ain't got no world. If I take you out, I called you for a reason. And if you can't fulfill your purpose, You must fulfill your purpose. Nothing is beneath us. Nothing is beneath us. Nothing is beneath us. But they hurt me and it was painful. He says, by my stripes, they are healed. He ain't even talking about you. He said, they are healed. I have healed your enemy. So what you thought was a snare. What you thought was a problem. What you thought was an issue. God says, I've given you victory over your enemy. I've given you victory over your enemy. I've given you victory over your mind. I've given you victory over your body. I've given you victory over your situation. Now bless the name of the Lord Jesus. 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 I thank God for what he's doing. What he's doing in us. What he's doing in the earth. That he does have a place to lay his head. He has us. He has the church. We are his bride. And we love her. We're going to take care of her going to watch over her. We're going to look out for her. She's not perfect. No. No. Flawed. A few spots and some blemishes. But this is a place where truth prevails. The body of Christ is a place where truth must prevail. Heavenly vision is a place where truth prevails he was here where many battles were fought many issues were talked about and we won some victories too we won a lot of victories here here 
at this altar. And we need to share the word that this is a place of healing. Not this building, but he's anointed this place, this time. This altar is a special place of healing. I don't like to give too much preference to places, but heavenly vision is a special place. Heavenly vision is a special place. I thank God for heavenly vision. I thank God for the body of Christ. I thank God for his church. And I love his bride. We have scuffles. But I hug her and I kiss her. Because she is me. And we are here. And we are moving forward. But in order to move forward, we're going to have to have faith. So uh, I'm calling those who are in need today. I'm making two calls. The first call is for the call of salvation. You understood? You heard about this finish? And you're like, I need some of that finishing stuff myself. I need to finish. I'm tired of not finishing. And I want this Jesus you're talking about. If that's you, you can raise your hand. We'll come to you. And you can make that step forward in faith and say, I want to know Jesus. I want to know Jesus. So check with your neighbor. I know we said we all family here. Hope I didn't cut up too bad. And uh, talk to your neighbor and ask him, do you got it? Do you have it? Do you know Jesus? Are you going to finish? Is everybody okay? I don't see no hands. Amen. Then the second call today. You saying, Elder, I'm unfinished. I'm not finished. I've forgotten how to fight. And I think I need some help with that freedom. If that's you today, and you would like for us to agree with you in prayer, we have ministers here. Ministers, raise your hands all over the room. We're calling. We're calling, we're calling, we're calling. If you say you need some help finishing, we would like for you to come forward. This is your time. 